Welcome to a hilarious Michael Jordan story on the day that a heckler kept antagonizing Jordan in a game in early 1995. And this story proves why you never talk trash to MJ because if you do, it's gonna backfire. Now, I want to give full credit to the man that created and filmed this Michael Jordan documentary called Meeting Michael. His name is Adam Contrast and all his links will be down below linked in the description. This video is not a documentary, but it's really an edited version of a story within the documentary. It's known as one of Jordan's greatest trash talking moments. And in this video, I really wanted to piece in clips, interviews, highlights from the game in 1995 versus the Cleveland Cavaliers and break it down for you in a short and condensed version. But if you did want to watch the full documentary, I'll leave it linked down below in the description. And a huge shout out to Adam for his amazing work. If you appreciate the time and effort it takes to create these videos, I'd really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button. Let's aim for 23,000 likes for the next video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification button so you are notified when a new story is released. And all the footage and videos that are used in this one is on the screen right now and in the description, so be sure to check them out. I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so I hope you enjoy the video. When I lose uh, the sense of motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player, uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. We're seeing the end of a terrific era here in the NBA. The word that Michael Jordan was officially returning to the NBA was made at about 1 o'clock central time today. He was a little different player. He had trained for baseball. His body was a little bit different. He was a little stronger, lower body, and didn't have that as much pop as he had. In typical Michael fashion, he knew how to adapt his game. You know, he became kind of a post-up player, hit those fadeaways. Michael played 13 games in a regular season with us, and we made the playoffs. It's all over, and the Bulls' season comes to an end. I think that really set the stage, at least for Michael. Michael being the person that he is, stepping up to challenges and not liking to lose. Came back the next year with a vengeance. With his dedication to the game, he kind of forces everyone else to come along or get out. November 9th, 1995, Gund Arena in Cleveland. We're back at Gund Arena. The lights have been dimmed for the introduction of the starting lineups to the home fans here at this uh, relatively new arena. Now, first of all, cameras aren't even allowed in the locker room. So this is pretty gutsy on my part, but just look at these pictures. Just before this, me, Michael, and two other broadcasters were just sitting around talking about everything. But it would have been a little awkward to have picked up the camera then, and I think the moment would have been kind of spoiled. So these are the shots I got. Okay, more from the locker room later. Now on to the game. And rounding out the starting five, Michael Jordan. Well, I won't say much about him. Back to form. Yes, sir. <laughs> Michael Jordan loading up in the traditional <laughs> and here we are, red curd chalky. Yes, wow. <laughs> and Michael Cage slides into the middle. So it's a late change for Mike Fratello. The Bulls in the traveling red uniforms. And the Cavaliers in the home whites. Take a good look at these shoes. They play a huge part later on in the show. Ten to go on the shot clock for the Bulls. Jordan down low over Bobby Fills. Nicely done. MJ's first from the field. Jordan over Fills. Michael's second from the field. Isn't really taking a shot, touched it much, but down low, he gets it, takes one look, goes to the baseline, up and in. Jordan on the fall away. Nicely done. Michael Jordan. Michael with six here tonight. Now here's Michael at his best. You wonder why he doesn't get many calls against him? Well, besides taking the refs out to dinner before the game, he's always smiling with him, always joking, buttering him up. Smacking him on the butt here. You know, he's very good at what he does. Now, Jordan was having a quiet first half with only six points in the first quarter and zero in the second. 
Jordan off the screen by Longley. Punch bag compliments of wholesome bread. You really didn't seem very engaged. Now there was really only one interesting subplot to the basic Michael Jordan show. That was there was a fan heckling Michael the entire game. some points in the early games but he's really got to get himself going. Michael hard shot off the glass. First of all making fun of the fact he only had six points in the first half and then making fun of his shoes. You don't rag on Jordan's shoes especially not that little guy right there. Now Jordan seemed basically oblivious. Kept playing. So Jordan starts to get more involved. Simpkins tipped it out to Michael, and Jordan with a chip shot has eight points of the game. And then Jordan fouls Brandon. Brandon, nice duck in on Jordan, and he draws the foul on Michael. That's when the heckler takes it one step too far. Terrell Brandon at the line for two. making fun of his shoes, telling him to go back to the old ones that he played better. When I look back over my footage and pictures, I realize this fan had been messing with Jordan during the entire game, including pre-game warm-ups. And then you see the broadcast and he would stand up. I mean, he's an arm's length away from Pippen when he stands. Scotty had it blocked from behind. Bobby fills to Bob Sir on the trail. Cavaliers by three. This may have made the heckler pretty happy, but it made Jordan and Pippen take over. Michael with the pull up. Michael Jordan. Shooting is cool here in the second half for both sides. Michael up and firing. He has had a better second half than first half. Jordan at the arc for three. Ring it up. 14 for Jordan. When you watch him, there's just no way you could guard this guy. He's just too quick. Jordan dealing baseline. Pretty move. Yes, sir. 29 for Michael. All of this leading to one of the most memorable answers to a heckler I've ever seen. I thought he never heard it. Five to go. They're in the red zone. Okay. Say he got bumped away on a play. He says something that our bench get it off, and he gets a little bump, falls away, shoots. He knows it's in. He turns to Mike Fratello and says, "See ya." After this shot to go up 16, however, I got my answer. After this shot, drains it, points to the heckler, and then starts yelling at it. Watch. Right back to Michael for three. Ring it up. His fourth of the night. 25 for MJ. And a happy birthday to Joe Posback. Switcher back in Chicago. We hope he's enjoying the game here. Michael shot that one for you, Joe. He points to the heckler and then trash talks it. Now, I've slowed this down as much as possible because I'm dying to know what he said. And the only part I can make out is keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. And the fan does. He gets right back in his face. Dude is uncomfortably close to Jordan here, and I'm actually stunned the ref didn't talk to him. But after this, MJ knew the game was sealed, and he was in good spirits. It was the only time I saw him smile the whole game. The Cavs were still scrapping, though, but it made little difference as MJ gets his 23rd point of the half. Michael passes on the three, takes a two attempt. 
Good vision by Tony to kick it out. Michael gets his third. Brings it for his 23rd point of the half. And they'll take a timeout. They call a timeout. Michael Jordan's three-point field goal on an assist from Tony Kukos gives the Bulls an 85-73 lead, their biggest of the night. And when he goes on the bench, watch what he does next. Points to the same guy and tells him to shut up. He has nothing left to say to him. Listen, I know Jordan's infamous about taking things personal. But it still blows my mind he would take something personal from someone so inconsequential. I couldn't believe this. I had to make sure that was the same guy. Zoom over. And believe it or not, it was the same guy. Now, Michael had a pretty good game. 23 points in the second half after starting kind of slow with six points. Michael Jordan, thriving on competition, makes a game out of a heckling fan. And, of course, he wins. 106-88. The Bulls have defeated the Cleveland Cavaliers. And everybody realized that this guy was back in his full force as, um, you know, the most dominant player in the game. When I was first in here, there were absolutely no reporters, maybe three or four. Now there were about 30, and Jordan had about maybe five inches to move. He was stuck in a corner. Lights were hot. I was standing on a stool trying to get these shots. Now that you're like you're four and zero, do you think 66 more to go to get to the the 70 mark, or is that even on your mind now? Let's just take it game by game. I have now regretted not asking Jordan about the heckler for longer than I was alive at that point. It would have been the perfect button to this story. But you have to realize I didn't understand the extent of the heckler until after I watched my footage. I only saw the shh and the fan laughing. The idea of a team winning 70 in one season was a much bigger deal, and it had never happened. But 25 years later, of course they ended up winning 70 and winning everything for the next three years. And the standout thing that I captured that day ended up being this side story about Jordan's remarkable ability to turn anything into motivation. So it was no secret that with the addition of Rodman, this team was going to be so good they could eclipse the all-time record of 69 and 13. But at this point, considering it was game four, no one had actually asked him. So I got to be the first idiot to do so. I'm kind of proud of that. I'm glad it's cemented into NBA history.